I began running because I no longer wanted to be 235 pounds. Of all the things to motivate me, it was me wanting to go and skydive. You had to be 240 pounds with gear, so I had to get in shape. When I began running, I hated every moment of it. I loathed it. And now, interestingly enough, I miss it if I don't go on a regular basis. I am 198 pounds and I compulsively weigh myself. I tell people that I don't care about my weight, but I really, really do. In fact, I noticed that I lie about myself a lot. And so I thought in order to really understand fully about myself, I needed to go to my friends and ask them some questions. What do I like about Kyle? Well, he's dead sexy. It's definitely inspiring uh, to see somebody uh, putting energy into, um, I guess, his passions, things that he's fascinated by. I feel like he can hear a point of view and always consider it. One of the things that I think is a Kyleism phrase that he, he uses a lot is, well, that, that's an interesting perspective. Or, well, the thing to think about that is, uh, and that's just, it uh, shows a curious mind, shows an open mind. Kyle's a good guy, which means he's a genuine good person, um, which I like that in people who aren't jerks. <laughs> um, we do have lots of film snobbery interests and social media interests, um, and I like that. Kyle is very disciplined in ways that I'm not, such as he has all these projects he wants to work on and is working on, and checklists of things to do, and he will actually do them all, whereas I would be like, I don't want to do that, and then I don't do it, or I do some of it, and then I have too many other stresses. So he doesn't let that BS get in his way, and he actually does it, which I admire in Kyle. So I like that as a quality, and I like tall men. He's fun, and he's so creative, and he's always up, up for anything, like I said, and he's, um, he has a different look at different things. If you watch his YouTube channel, you'll see he has a different outlook on things. And he likes to explore boundaries and, yeah, experience new things. He's always up for anything, so I like that about him. What I like about Kyle is his sense of humor. I feel like there's been very few people that actually can really kind of run on jokes with me. And they can kind of get more ridiculous. And I just genuinely laugh when I'm around Kyle. But I also find there is a real sincere goodness and kindness that I always appreciate and an empathy. And I just think a sense of humor and a good person. That's what I really like about Kyle. So a lot of smoke being blown up my ass, which is not a bad thing. I encourage everyone to try it at least once. So all the friends that I went to have known me for varying lengths of time. And I really wanted to know what was that first meeting like and what has changed since then? Yeah, I do remember when I first met Kyle. Um, he was training me at my job. He was one of the trainers. What stood out was his t-shirt. It was this really nerdy t-shirt that seemed to reference some sort of video game or movie that nobody knew about that was probably funded on YouTube. Because I probably asked him about it and he was really awkward and embarrassed by his answer. It's like, oh, some YouTube. <laughs> he was really tall and kind of awkward and shy. And he shuffled into our new dorm room and went to his room saying hello and then shut the door. So we met six years ago. We were in the same hiring group. Um, what I remember, uh, just generally friendly, definitely uh, a bit shy, but not, not in a bad way. It was just one of those, you know, I think similar to myself, takes a little bit to get to know the person sort of thing. Uh, definitely um, a lot different than the Kyle I know today. There wasn't like a moment where I just thought, oh, Kyle and his first impression. It was almost like the most gradual gradient of where I just thought, this guy is really funny and he's really smart and he really likes good movies. So to answer your question, what stood out was humor and kindness, I would say. But I don't have a memory of like an actual like 
he was in the cafeteria and he dropped his lunch tray. It was just, I don't know. It was too gradual. But he was really, he was a kind, he was really, he took the time to answer questions. Um, he was really nerdy and geekish and I thought that was odd. Uh, but yeah, I, I was really, I was really glad that he was one of the trainers. I met Cal in the fall of 2005. I was working at Chapters and he was just hired as the new manager. And our mutual boss, Heather, called me to the back office and being, uh, trying to be funny, I <laughs> kicked in the door and said, what the fuck do you want? And yeah, and was that about Cal? Well, he was scared that day. He was very scared. Um, but up for anything, always um, eager to do anything. And uh, I think a little bit un unsure of himself as a manager, but he came into his own. What's changed? Well, uh, definitely a lot more outgoing, a lot more confident. Uh, and I've also been around for his progression with YouTube career uh i guess we really started becoming friends because we found out we had uh youtube in common uh, the difference was kyle decided to become a youtube creator well he's still tall maybe taller but i don't think so but yeah definitely he is less shy less awkward less anxious and more comfortable with himself is something I've noticed, but I've been around Kyle a lot, so. We've gotten to know each other better. Um, we've had long talks, and I just kind of feel like what once was, here's a funny guy uh, during our work breaks where we would crack jokes and make each other laugh is now a friend. I would just say that's what's changed. It's now like an actual friendship. It's gone beyond work. Well, his job, and he's become more focused in the art world and being more creative. Uh, when we were at Chapters, he was just focused on working at Chapters, but I'm happy he left there and went to where he became more focused on being creative and expanding his YouTube and uh, working on his books. It's hard to say because I didn't really know Kyle back then that well. I just met him. Uh... And so I guess it's the fact that I know him now, and that I'm able to see the, um, the we're able to t talk about interesting things, um, not just have this kind of mentor, mentoree relationship. I've been very interested in time recently, and this is probably mostly due to my fascination of Richard Linklater as a filmmaker. It mostly also has to do with my recent viewings of some of the Seven Up films, which is this British video series which has followed the same group of people from age 7 to age 56. For a true exploration of a person's life, you cannot expect to take a snapshot of a very particular time and really truly know anything about that person. And that's why I want to return back to this series every three years. What will I be doing at that time? What will my friends be doing in three years? Where will Kyle be in three years? He... that's a good question. He's threatened many times to move to various places that have a better climate. Um, I kind of like to see it if he actually did one of those places, whether it's in the States or on the coast or wherever it might be. Um, be sad to see him go, but then I'll get to go visit. So, um, depending on which of his projects takes off and, and what he does with But I really have no idea. So that's the exciting part. What I really see is him getting way more involved with the online video community. Over the past couple of years, I've just seen that grow, where at VidCon, uh, Kyle gets recognized more, there's people that know his work, and I think in three years, I think you can three times the amount that people recognize him, and the community is going to grow. And I think Kyle is still going to be making videos, He's still going to be uh, working on projects, and I think it's just going to get better and better and better, and more people are going to hear about him. Maybe dead. <laughs> no, hopefully. He will be working part-time because his creative stuff on YouTube has taken off. His book has been published, and he will, yeah, be more creative. Well, it's not very successful if he keeps making documentaries about himself. I mean, who cares? <laughs> I'm kidding. Actually, I, I think in three years... Well, Kyle's... One thing I've noticed this year about Kyle is that he's very driven to um, succeed in small things. He put out a YouTube video at the beginning of this year all about uh, 10, 12 things he wanted to get done this year. And then last week, it was the half-year mark, he told us how he had succeeded them. And that, that's admirable. Um, 
maybe self-centered, but then again, he's making a documentary about himself, so there's that. So I think that he will continue to... Uh, I think he'll probably still be working at his, at the same job. He'll still be just as nerdy as ever. Uh, but I do think that he will have reached some of these goals, and that those that reaching those goals will have helped him. He probably has a book published at that point. His YouTube count, video count will have gone up. Um, he will probably have learned more and be more nuanced in his discussions and his videos. I think the future looks great for Kyle. I guess media production. You know, because th- th- that can be audio, that can be video. Uh, I think still doing on on camera or being the talent will still be a factor, if not producing, for sure. Where will I be in three years? Well, we'll have just moved back to Calgary because we um, had taken a year off to travel the world. So, yeah, hopefully a mum and either back in Calgary or someplace else. Right now, I'm working, uh, doing some part-time roles, church and my own personal life. I uh, just got my website set up. But in three years, I really hope that I would be studying at that point. Um, hopefully an English degree. Uh, hopefully freelancing in some manner. Uh, what that looks like specifically, I'm not sure. You know, it could be uh, with photography. It could go in a completely different direction. I do think it's going to be somehow in the creative realm. You know, uh, it could be uh, helping people with training. Uh, it seems to be something that I've fallen into that works well. So we'll see. This is a hard question because I have no idea. Um, hopefully I will have traveled more and currently be traveling somewhere exciting in exactly three years from now. Um, I hope to be in a different stage in my relationship. Um, and I hope to have my business booming or have even sold it and done something different by then but lots of change in the next few years. I just don't know what the change is. I think I'm still gonna be here. I'll be in this house. Right now, I'm a pastor of a small church. I think I'll still be there. What I would hope is that in three years, I would have grown. Um, And what I mean, actually I was, can I answer this in kind of a long way? Okay, so this morning I was on a run And I was just thinking, what do I really want? And because I'm a pastor, I got to get kind of religious. That's okay. Jesus said, you will know a tree by their fruit. In three years, I want good fruit. I want to have known people that say, because I entered into this church community, I've I've learned to forgive better. I've uh, been more empathetic. I've been more kind. Um... I want to know that people have gotten food that otherwise wouldn't have had food. So all, all I would say is in three years, I think I'm going to be where I am now, but I want to know that there's good fruit around what I'm doing. I'm always upset by the mediocrity of myself. I'm not really great at anything, at least that's my perception of myself. So I really wanted to focus in on what my greatest opportunity was. And there was people who had problem with that question. So just imagine if I had asked, what do I suck at? I think just um, trusting himself, you know, uh, having that confidence that, you know, even though there aren't necessarily numbers proving that things are are going in the right direction, that they are going in the right direction, Um, and uh, not being as self-critical. You know, I think critiquing yourself is definitely important, but, um, you know, uh, trusting the feedback of friends and family and, and... and just running with it. That's, that's a good question. Um, I'd have to think about that for about 24 hours. Getting laid. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. I think um, he's got, maybe had more confidence in himself. And uh, yeah, I think that's, you know, that he, what he, can, he can do what he wants to do and be proud of that. Well, that's something to ask Kyle, I think. But um, I think Kyle has some anxiousness and personal fears of his own um, that he knows about and I think if he can get to the bottom of the issues and conquer his fears I think he'll be unlimited possibilities. Sounds kind of cliche but I think he'll be do anything he want without any himself holding him back. I think when I think back to what I admire about Kyle and what I think Kyle will succeed in in the upcoming three years is that driven ability, the self-driven ability to go and do stuff. At the same time, it can be very 
it can, it can show a, a, um, a self-centered worth, I guess, that I can go out and do this, and that I will go out and do this, and if I don't do these things, my life is a mess. And it, it's a subtle thing, but I think it, uh, maybe it shows a pride in oneself. Uh, and so part of it is humility, part of it is realizing what you're not good at, but I'd say Kyle has that too. But I guess an opportunity would be to stay driven and keep on being motivated and keep on succeeding good things, but doing it um, for the sake maybe of others and not your own glory. I think he can believe in himself a little bit more. I would say to actually not um, misunderstand confidence as pride. I think what Kyle does is really good work. And I think he's really smart. And I think that what what can actually hold him back is actually feeling like what he's doing isn't good enough. Um, one thing I love about Kyle is that he's self-deprecating. And I think that's hilarious. And I don't think that's a problem. But what I would say is I hope Kyle believes that what he's doing is really good. And he gets more confident. And he pursues his dreams even more than he does now. I was wandering around a bookstore the other day and I just so happened to have a cameraman following me around. I enjoy reading a lot, have ever since I was a kid. It allows me to escape the current world I am in and into a world where I am essentially a god observing what is happening. I always had a hard time making friends, mostly because I never understood why anybody would want to be my friend. So I really just wanted to know why these people chose to be in my life. Why am I friends with Kyle? He's a really interesting guy. Uh, he's really funny. Sounds like some sort of like first date video. It's just ridiculous. Um, he's very self-centered, obviously, but that's not why I like being around him. <laughs> but he lets me stare and start in cool videos like this, so that's kind of cool. Uh, why do I with my friends with Kyle? Yeah, he's he's interested in a lot of very interesting things, and I feel like he's the kind of guy that I can have a conversation on very many different topics, and we can go on long conversations that are really interesting, full of depth, that we can disagree on, but we can still enjoy disagreeing and come to realize other people's positions without having this sort of tolerant state of we're all on the same level here, but that we're still able to interact. I think, you know, to a certain degree having things in common. So the YouTube videos was definitely that in. Um, and aside from that, just a really comfortable conversation. I think we have the, uh, just the creative world in common. I feel like I can uh, discuss uh, my interest in photography and there's still that relationship with making things and the struggles and the successes when it comes to uh, that realm. Because one day he'll be rich and famous and he can buy me stuff. <laughs> no, because he's lots of fun and we like to hang out and he's always up for lots of fun things. Yeah, like what? We, oh, always going, he would always go with me to Fringe Fest or any underground play movies and tonight for example we're going to a house concert so he's always up to try new creative art things so he still nerds me out quite a bit he'll be like there was this one director this really weird thing and he was crazy back in like the 80s and his name is this john moe who cares kyle was a good buddy to university and i think in university you create a bond with people that um assuming they're a good influence on your life you want to keep them around and so I've remained friends with a lot of university friends, including Kyle. He's a good guy, and we have similar interests. Um, so I think we get along well. We kind of bicker like we're married, but that's a sign of a strong relationship, I think. In three years, I have no idea where I'm going to be or what I'm going to be doing, hopefully in a better place. And if not, God, that's a depressing thought to think of. Learning to value what I have might be something I need to work on. My friends are pretty awesome. I consider myself a failure, but that is not necessarily how others see me. How crazy is it to start to see yourself through the gaze of somebody else? All of your bad parts and failings that you obsess over are things that they can kind of push aside and focus in on the good. How great would it be to harness that power? After each short interview I had with my friends, I asked them if there was anything they wanted to add, and there were some good things that were said and some great stories that were told, but it was Justin's that really stood out the most to me. The only thing I would add is when talking about Kyle, <laughs> there's just this amazing platonic affection I have for him. I, 
I don't think I could, I've ever said a, a mean word about him because he, I just am such a huge fan. And it's more like I've discovered this amazing band or this restaurant that nobody knows of. And I'm actually saying, like, you guys should really check this out. It's pretty awesome. And so that's all I would add is that. I am the Olive Garden. <laughs> it's, you, it's kind of like when the Olive Garden has a special on and you just want people to know it's a great value. <laughs> so you got to spread the word. <laughs> Talking out. Yeah. My favorite thing about the story that we just read was how absolutely mundane and boring it starts.